So one of the best things about being a coach is I'm constantly inspired by amazing success stories and finding out how parents and people of all walks of life are building a profitable business and making great impact doing what they love. And today I've got an awesome success case study to share with you someone who's actually taken their passion for parent coaching and teaching parents how to be the most amazing parents they can be and building a scalable leverage business around that passion. Hi, I'm Melanie Benson Strick and I'm a profit strategist and business optimizer for visionary, fast-paced entrepreneurs who want to make a great impact in the world and make great income in the process. And this is our Power Up show where we learn from all different kinds of people how to power up your business from the inside out. And today I want to introduce you to a longtime friend of mine, Gillette Jai, and she is the founder of the Jai Institute for Parenting, where she's trained conscious parenting coaches all over the world, from the U.S. to Canada, Brazil to South Africa, the U.K. to Dubai, to help parents raise caring, capable, and confident kids with her 10-step Jai process. The process is the first of its kind, helping parents experience authentic, deep connection with their children while setting limits in a way that enhances the long-term relationship between parent and child. And Gillette is a passionate public speaker, inspired entrepreneur, paradigm shifter, and most of all, a fun-loving mom to a wonderfully spirited nine-year-old boy, Gabriel, and soon to be a new wife, yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting for me. Uh, I'm so happy for you. And, you know, I have to say, I, I had just this beautiful, extraordinary conversation, which I mean, I've known from Gillette for a really, really long time, but it's funny how in your life you, you travel this path. And then at a certain point in your journey, all of a sudden, what somebody does becomes very uh, poignant and important to you. And as much as I love all of our, our amazing healers out there who work with uh, parents and make parents better parents, it became very relevant to me as I'm now moving into my journey of being a stepmom. And uh, uh, I'm already kind of in that role, but we'll be officially in that role next year. And, and, you know, me being me, I'm a high achiever and I always want to find the best ways to do things. And so I, I'm turning to one of my great friends for advice and to learn her program and, and the, you know, just the, the way in which she holds space as a parent. And, and now all of a sudden it's so relevant <laughs> for me. <laughs> So I appreciate you. I value you. And I've, I've been very moved by, you know, the, the work that you do and how you teach parents to be better parents. It's, it's extraordinary. Thank you so much, Melanie. It's, um, you know, it's such a pleasure being with you in this environment here because we've been such dear friends and watching you really flourish as a stepmom and hearing your stories now. I get so excited for you because I just I love it. <laughs> Well, I have to say, being a coach comes in handy in this journey, as you know, which we'll talk about more later. But, um, you know, let's, I just want to start by um, getting clear how you came to the point where uh, parenting coaches became, you know, or being a coach to parents who want to coach <laughs> became so clear to you that that was where you wanted to be in life. Yeah, well, it was, it's a very interesting journey because I loved what I did. I loved, and I love what I do as a parenting coach. However, I knew inside that I had a bigger mission and that, you know, when you are doing something that's affecting people's lives and you're seeing transformation and it's affecting generations, like we're really changing patterns with, between parents and children that are affecting generations. Parents aren't yelling anymore. They're not screaming. They're not hitting their kids. Instead, they're connecting with their kids and the children's lives are changing so much. Like a children's whole future changes when they have an empathetic connection with a parent. And I just felt that. I mean, I feel it in my own family. I started seeing it in my clients and I got so inspired and I thought, okay, hold on. I'm one person. I mean, how many people can I coach? You know, it's like, so then I thought, okay, it was kind of like a pebble in a pond idea thinking like, okay, I'm just going to like throw this out there and start coaching people to do what I do. Because I wanted parents to really experience this. And I wanted other people to be able to take this work out there and to really make that difference in families' lives. And I knew that I was just one person. So Yeah. And, you know, that is truly a profound point to be at in your journey when you know, I can't just afford to do this one-on-one -on -one anymore. Yeah. I, I can't just 
you know, make the impact with that one person. I, it's so much bigger than this and really embracing that and saying yes to that and, and stepping fully into it because it changes the dynamic greatly at that point, right? Like you, you don't always get to see the one-off impact. You, you get to see the bigger impact. Yeah, and, absolutely. and so what is the greater impact that's happening now that you've shifted out of just coaching parents who want to be better parents you're now coaching coaches who want to be parent coaches and and take this work out to the world in a bigger way well yeah so i'm seeing the impact in a huge way i mean i we hear stories back now i heard one yesterday where one of our parenting coaches is being asked being invited to work with parents of abused children and she's going to be speaking in an event in may for hundreds of parents and you know i it's one person, like one of our coaches. So that's just one story where she's going to be affecting hundreds of parents' lives. I'm not going to be with her. I don't know what she's going to say. I mean, we've trained her. Um, and so part of it is really letting go of the ego and letting go of, you know, I've got to have it done my way and really having an, a very deep trust in all of these coaches and their hearts and their missions that they're bringing this out there and hearing these, the second thing is really hearing these stories come back. I mean, now I know the impact is so huge. People are going into corporations and speaking with parents there. They're speaking at huge conferences. They're going into the school systems in different States and speaking there. And when you can start to shift the paradigm really of somebody being controlling over a child rather than having a relationship with a child and it start and teachers are now having relationships with the children, then wow. We're talking about something completely different. So what I get really excited about is that everyone, every parenting coach has their own journey and their own mission. And some are really interested in teaching nutrition along with it. Some are interested in going into schools. Some are interested in going into yoga studios. There, you know, so there's just such a wide array of impact that's happening. And I get to hear about some of it and I don't get to hear about some of it. And I like it because it's, you know, it's, you know, that it's all happening out there. Yeah. Well, you know, what's happening for you, at least the way I see it is um, you're tapping into one of my favorite growth strategies, which is leverage. And you're able to um, be able to not just expand your impact, but you're also exponentially expanding your income because you're not just an hour of your time. You're doing group processes. And so I was wondering if you could share with us a little bit about some of the, the, the infrastructure or the steps behind making this happen. Because I know a lot of people want to do this, Gillette. And not everybody's successfully able to make that leap, right? Like they get stuck on something along the way or they can't really figure out, all right, how do I do this successfully? Yeah, it's great. So I think one of the biggest hurdles to get over is in your mind thinking that group coaching is less than individual coaching. Oh, thank you for saying that. <laughs> um, individual coaching. Now, when we, when we started making this leap over on people, if they ever ask, you know, why in a group program, it's incredible what happens in a group. It is absolutely incredible because not only are, are is each um, and our coaching program is very unique in that we do give individual coaching within the group. It's not just a Q and A. So um, it's very unique and people are getting, they're getting individually coached, but they hear everyone else's issues. And I know for business, I'm sure Melanie, it's like this too, but for parenting, people are feeling like they're alone. Like they're alone in parenting. And just by being in a group and hearing everybody's issues and hearing the coaching that they receive, just that alone is, you know, worth its weight in gold and worth so much more than individual coaching, I believe. So, yeah. So what you're, what I'm hearing you say is that the best part of group coaching is, is that you aren't the only person they learn from. There's this interaction that pulls things out of people that you wouldn't normally get to in a one-on-one, -on -one, but there's also insights and reflections back from other coaching uh, coaches and parents who are, are able to see things that you don't mm -hmm. again, the best of both worlds, plus your, your knowledge. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And you asked about infrastructure too. So we, we run them through a 10 week program mm -hmm. and what we've done is we've created the material online. So that takes, part of our coaching time away from us individually. We also have um, team leaders who are coaching. So we, they, they basically go through the material online. Then we do a group. We lead a group once a week and they get to receive their coaching there in that group. Mm. So that's how it's, that's basically the infrastructure of it. Yeah. And so at the end of that time, what happens for the person who's gone through the program? What, what is it that's different for them? 
Oh, wow. Well, the program is broken up into three parts. So there's the first 10 weeks, the second 10 weeks, and the last four weeks. So the first 10 weeks, they get to work with their child, and yeah. it's the 10-step process. So about the third or fourth week, they start really seeing transformation in the family, and they get excited. They get so juiced. So they're seeing that, you know, they're cooperating, their kids are cooperating, um, pieces in the family, harmony between them and their husband, like all sorts of stuff starts happening. They're all sharing it in their group. They're really excited. So that's the first 10 weeks. Then the second 10 weeks, they're becoming coaches and they're learning how to coach the first 10 weeks they just went through. So they're learning how to work with clients and we have them working with each other. And that's where they really become empowered as a coach and they start learning the processes. And because they're getting, it's like, a long time ago, I went to massage school, many years, another lifetime. And I loved it because, you know, it was so great. You got to get massage, receive massage and give massage. And so that's really how our coach training program is, is that they're receiving parent coaching and they're giving it and they're learning the tools in the process. And they just feel empowered. I mean, they feel so empowered as a coach that it's working and they see it working. And then in the last four weeks, we talk about how do you enroll clients? And so that's when we get to really get over their money mindset fears, um, talking about money, really receiving money for their services. And that's a real fun, I think of it as like a kind of a um, changing, of, like not having fear anymore really is where that's the last four weeks is to get over the fears of actually working with clients. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's so really they leave and they not only have a skill set, and have had personal transformation in their own home, but they also have the ability to go out and start actively working with clients and have the tool set to, to make that transition more successfully than if they were just trying to wing it on their own. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. So in a way, what you're doing is, is you're helping coaches really find a niche that, that serves them and have a successful um, money-making business as a coach, which, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but uh, a few years back, there was a study done in the coaching industry, and uh, I think it was something like only 27% of coaches who are trained coaches make more than $20,000 a year. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So, so any opportunity we have to, to really make a business work and to have a solid uh, system it is going to make these coaches more powerful out in the world and to, to help them do what they want to do or do what they're born to do, really. Yeah, and I will to speak to that, too. The, the first thing is that all of our coaches feel this calling. We always They always feel the calling to help parents, and they're parents themselves, and they just really value parenting so much. They really do it from their hearts. It's their calling. But the second thing is that I am such an advocate that coaches get paid what they're worth. And I really believe that this kind of, at least what I know of this coaching is it's so valuable. And we've seen it work time and time again in families. And I'm adamant that one of our coaches does not get underpaid for that work. So when we do train them, there's a lot of um, fear and doubt and all of that stuff to get over to actually charge what this is worth. And we, we let them know, we, we invite them to start charging that in the beginning. And they do, and they get so excited. Wow, I just, $2,000 for my first client. This is so great, $3,000, you know. And, and it's not, I want to say it's like not about the money, but the money's a representation of the work. And that they really feel valued. They give valuable service back. And everyone, it's like a win-win for everybody. So I think it's really important. And that's actually one of the biggest hurdles of training coaches is to get over that money mindset. So they really yes. feel valued and they feel like um, they're worthy of what they're doing. Yes, this is why I teach a money mindset program, because actually I would say at least 60 percent of entrepreneurs in general who are heart based and, and have some kind of a purpose based business. The trauma that they brought into this business around money and the way their beliefs and their their conflicts and their fears are, are you know holding them back is just it's having a catastrophic effect on their business success. So I, I absolutely see how important that is. Yeah. I love that you're including it too. Oh yeah, absolutely <laughs> including it. Yeah. Because we pay for, you know, like I happily pay coaches, you know, my coach, it's very important. And so I want them to be able to receive too. It's really important. So yeah. And also these are parents who want to be with their kids. So they're, they're have a business, you know, I've always designed my business so I can always be with my son. 
every day after school. It's really, that's my priority. So these are parents who want the same and they love being with their kids. So they don't want, you know, if you want to be with your kid and you want to make a good income so you can be with your child, like it's working. We have a coach the other day who said she works six to seven hours a week and she's made more money in a year than she made in her first job. She's so excited right now. So, awesome. if you want to, right? Isn't that cool? so if you want to do that, then you're going to need to charge. You can't, you know, if you only want to work six to seven hours a week, then you got to charge for your services. It won't be like $20 an hour. You won't yeah. Be. So, yeah, it's kind of, there's an exercise I take my clients through money DNA where I help them kind of reverse engineer. Like if you want to be making this money and you want to be working this, these amount of hours, here's what you've got to be charging if you want to actually create that. Yeah. And it, it's a real eye opener when you, instead of just winging it and trying to charge what you think you're worth, when you reverse engineer it like that, it's very insightful. Oh yeah. Now I see why I have to charge this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they run deep, right? The patterns. They keep yes. Charging that. It runs so deep. So I really admire what you do. <laughs> well, other than that's what feels me. Like I love helping people get the inside right. So they can take the right steps and the right actions on the outside. And, and Ultimately, um, that's what we're doing here is like, how do you create something that actually works in your business, which is what you're doing? Speaking of that, I'm really curious if there was a particular piece uh, of making the transition from being a one on one coach to being somebody who holds space for groups to go through this program. Was there something that had to change in you so that you could actually fully embrace this and get this out in the world in, in a successful way? Hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Or maybe even a habit or a strategy that had to change uh, in the way you work. And and for a lot of people, these were game changing moments like, oh, yeah, I had to learn this in order to really be ready to do that next phase of my business. Yeah, I had to learn how to um, manage time in the coaching atmosphere. So if I have an hour with one client, it's going to go a certain way. And I remember when we started leading groups, and when I started leading groups and then training people to lead groups, you have to really manage the time that's an hour time so that everybody has a voice within the group. So I would, I was really like, I had my clock or my phone right next to me, and I would really look at it a lot. And it was more about letting go of that if we didn't talk for an hour, that people weren't getting it. Like if one person didn't talk for an hour, then nobody's getting it. But if one person talks for five minutes, it's okay. Like it's okay for them to just talk. If you're talking about moving into groups, it's okay to talk for just two minutes. And you can let people know that too. Um, another thing was really being um, like setting the space up for everybody to know what's gonna happen. So when you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I don't think you need as much structure, right? We're going to do this in the next hour and then you jump right into it. But with so many people, okay, you guys, we have, you know, an hour and for our group shares today, we have three minutes each. And so just letting them know exactly what's happening. That was one thing. I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but that was, no, it could be anything. And, and really, you know, um, we all have our own growth process to become successful in business, right? Like there's certain things we have to overcome in us and there's certain skills and muscles we have to build up. Yeah. So everybody, you know, answers it very differently. It's always unique. For, like somebody else was talking about how to, how to, um, how they had to uh, respect when they needed to recharge and they didn't want to grow the business. You know, I think it's such a unique and individual process that we all face to become the person that can run a successful business. Yeah. Yeah, completely. And really, I think of the groups as an energy into themselves. So every time we're on group number 23 now, so every group that we start really, um, there's a special collage that's made for every group. There's, yeah. we talk about it as a team. It's a certain energy that we're bringing in. Um, we really set the tone and the energy for every group coming in. So really seeing that, that space and really treating it as a container that they're going to walk into. That's beautiful. I love that. So I think it'd be really fun to share a couple of the principles of your Jai process, because um, as somebody who's, who's kind of stepping into the space of being a step parent, I, I'm full of questions and I, I'm a sponge, you know, out there 
you know, looking at all the different ways in which we guide people on how to be a parent, you know, and there's always that joke, like, no, there are no manuals for being a great parent. Well, I actually think you probably do have a manual for being a great parent. Um, But what are a couple of the things that are so important in this body of work that people learn as they go through your program? Yeah. So the first thing that's really important that people learn is empathy. Mm -hmm. And empathy is really, you know, so much of us as adults didn't feel like we were really heard as children and we didn't really have our voices. You know, we, we couldn't really express ourselves. And so much of the time, we're not really listening to our kids. Um, We're moving them along or we're really trying to get cooperation or get them to do what we want them to do. And the first step in all of this is that we're connected and connection starts with empathy. So if there's no empathy there, there really can't be that much cooperation. I mean, there could be dominant style of cooperation with punishments like you're going to do that or else. But that doesn't create connection and it doesn't create long term relationship. So the first step is really empathy and empathy is just getting in somebody else's shoes and feeling, you know, having them be able to express their feelings and not put any energy on it. Wow. You're feeling sad right now. Okay. I I understand you're feeling sad. Like it's not, it's not putting a charge on it. It's not putting a judgment on it, a definition on it. It's just really allowing them just to be. And it's amazing what happens with empathy. Like children just like come alive when you just listen to them and you really try to get, who they are. So one of the things with empathy that you could use with your, I don't know if you're, if you want to use it with your stepchildren is, um, I'm all for empathy. <laughs> yeah. Is, um, help me understand, mm-hmm. help me understand what, what's, what you're feeling right now. And those three words help me understand really, um, what I've noticed is they really bring out a child, like bring out what they're feeling and really creating a space for them to know that there's no judgment here. There is no judgment in empathy. Just help me understand. I have no judgment on what you're going to say or what's happening. So that's the first thing that we use. Um, anything around that? <laughs> well, no, I love it because it's actually one of the things that um, I, from my coaching world, instinctually went to is, is, um, you know, I, I didn't use the word empathy, but I, I feel like the, when I can understand where someone is, then I know what we're working with. Yes. And I agree with you. I think sometimes we just like kind of smush kids into the box of how do I get them to do what I want them to do? But we don't really know. We can't really guide them anywhere if we don't know where they are. Yes. Yes. So much so. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Um, and it's funny with empathy because it just seems to, it connects you, but it also, um, it relaxes a child. Like you'll notice a child just relax once they receive your empathy. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. The second one, we really explore limiting beliefs. So we feel like if the child is really struggling with it, or the parent is really struggling with a feeling that's strong, that's, you know, maybe quote a negative feeling, or you're very angry or upset, then looking at what are you thinking about your child or yourself that's underneath that feeling. So there's going to be some judgment, some belief that's not really supporting you, that's giving you that strong feeling, that trigger right now. And so really to just take a minute, take a breath and look at what is underneath that feeling. It could be, you know, I'm all alone. It could be that um, my child never does this or he never listens to me. That's a, a belief that will not support your parenting. So looking at all these beliefs in them or looking at one belief, what is underneath those really strong feelings? And you can coach your child to look for that belief as well. So, wow, you're really feeling that. What are they believing that's under that? That's not supporting them. That's not in their best interest to, to keep believing about themselves. So that's really the, it's kind of the, the secret juice or the juice of our program is all about these limiting beliefs. Yeah. And, and again, from the mindset place, I can, it's just extraordinary to help children see there's other possibilities. There's other ways of thinking. There's other ways of seeing things. And, you know, um, without getting too deep into, you know, personal stuff for other people, you know, one of the things that I, I really work with the, the young people in my life, because there's several, uh, including my nieces and nephews is really just, um, you know, acknowledging them, but, but, you know, kind of painting a picture of like, well, you know, what if, what if it was actually, you know, kind of like painting another possibility once I've kind of understood where they're at with things and, 
and, you know, not just taking things at face value. And again, you probably do this way more effectively than I would. <laughs> but I, I think in any situation, when we limit ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, we, we've shut down, you know, all the possibilities in our life. So I love that you're making that part of your program. Yeah, it's a huge part of our program. <laughs> so, you know, you actually brought up something else and we don't have to go too deep into this, but it was really um, it was it just was something that that really sparked for me. And that is. Um, when you want to help activate a child's full potential, recognizing that there are values that they could express more of. Mm. And, and instead of, you know, like you said, the punishment process or trying to control children or, you know, there's all these dictator type things that, that many of us grew up under <laughs> that we just recreate unconsciously. Yes. But I love that maybe we, we look at how do we access a certain value and, you know, it's, it's again, you know, as human beings, we have the potential in every interaction with somebody to create harmony and connection or to create disconnect and, and um, a rejection of the other person. Yes. And, and any time we use any of these techniques that you're talking about, we're actually accessing that. So whether you're doing it with a child, or you're doing it with a team member, you're doing it with a colleague who's, who's driving you nuts, right? Like these, these are principles we can use in, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when we had that conversation about accessing the value, it is, you know, but before you can really access the value or teach a child a value, you need that connection. That's why I talk about empathy first. So there's in our process, it's very methodical because if you start trying to teach values through punishment, it doesn't, you know, you're still, then you're not going to be creating that bond. Right. So absolutely. Values are so amazingly important and it's wild how you know, people will talk to my son or they'll ask him, you know, what's it like? He'll, he'll be somewhere where he's um, interacting with some punishments that are going on. And he'll say, I wasn't raised with punishments. I'm not, we don't punish in our family. What? Punish in your family? <laughs> what if you don't do something? And he says, no, my mom just talks to me. We just talk, basically. And values are a big part of that talking because we have agreements about values. So values can run really deep when you have the empathy first. So when you've already built that empathetic connection, then the values are incredible because the child, once they understand and they grasp the value and they want it, they agree to it. It's not you just imposing that value upon them. Like we need to be nice to other people because we're all nice to other people. (laughs) Okay. Um, But when they really see why and they come to it and they say, why do you think that value is so important? And they start, you know, expressing themselves because they feel comfortable with you because you've had empathy before um then they get excited they're like oh wow yeah I can see why compassion is so important and when I did this with my friend it wasn't you know god I felt terrible inside but when I did this um and I was compassionate or I offered a helping hand or um then I felt really good inside and when they start seeing the difference in that that's when they're self-motivated their values become self-motivating and they're motivated to have those values. And that's why this kind of parenting, um, it flows. It really flows. For me, it flows. And for our coaches, it does. I love that. It's, that's beautiful. And, and again, I can't, I, I can, I can imagine. I almost said I can't imagine, but I can imagine um, what our world would be like when parents, more parents than not, were trained in this way of connecting with their children and guiding them and, and inspiring them to really you know, own their brilliance on this planet. And, you know, I'll just put out there that, you know, I could see, you know, 15, 20, maybe 40 years down the road, what is going to change in our society, having children raised this way instead of raised under oppression and, and other um, ways of, of parenting that are not as effective and oftentimes quite destructive. Yeah, it's really, um, It excites me so much. I mean, this this idea inspires me so much and the work that we do, because I've seen it already just, you know, I've raised my son from seven to nine, I mean, from two years old to nine years old with this, so seven years, and I've seen the change in him, and I, yeah, and I watch the children of our coaches and see the change in them from the stories I hear. Yeah, yeah, so when I think of the impact that it can really have, I mean, children really having their voice, living values that are... um, really important to them and really important to their families and what kind of leaders are they going to be in the world 
I yes. so, but I can only get, I can only guess and I can only get inspired by thinking that they feel safe. They feel nurtured. They feel like they're heard. I mean, they don't have that. They don't operate from fear anymore. So we don't have all of these fear-based beliefs and fear-based um, just leadership from fear. We can totally do away with that. So that's my imagination. You know, that's what I imagine it to be. So the, they won't have to go through my Awaken Leader um, programs because they'll <laughs> already be Awaken Leaders. <laughs> I'll have something new for you to do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the continuum. <laughs> there you go, yeah. them off and into them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. And Julia, this is, it's just, it's very inspiring to hear the impact that you're making. It, it's such a such a gift. And I know there, there are going to be people that are listening to this and maybe, you know, as, as you're hearing Gillette talk, you're thinking, well, I want to learn to be a parent like that. Or you're thinking, wow, this would be a great way for me to take the training I have as a coach or uh, a healer of some fashion. So how can people connect with you about the work that you're doing? Yeah. So we have a book that we wanted to offer your audience. Oh, and, that's great. Yeah. And I, I don't know today. I think you're going to, Put the, URL. Yeah, put the URL right here. Yeah, so we have a book. It's called 100% Parent. Do I have one lying around? I don't even have one in front of me. Oh, wait, yes, I do. Hold on. Ah, here you go. <laughs> I remember seeing that all over Facebook. Yeah. yeah, so there's the book. And it's really short. It's a really easy read. We did it so you can get everything in the book. Um, yes, yeah, so we're offering it to your community. And that's um, this is really where you're going to get a lot of the tools more in depth that we talked about today. And you'll also get to learn about limiting beliefs, what you can do with them as a parent. And um, yeah, so that's what we're offering you today. I'll be devouring the book instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I will read it as well. <laughs> Thank awesome. you, darling. That's really generous of you. And, and again, even if what you do is connecting with children that are not your own, I just think anytime we have, an opportunity to to touch a child and inspire them in a new way and to, to create a, a new container for them, you know, we're, we're making a difference for future generations. So first of all, thank you so much for stepping into your brilliance and, and making a commitment to get this work out in a greater way. And, and uh, as you're listening in today as a guest, I hope you're inspired as I am to, in whatever form it takes, to grab a, a copy of this book that Gillette's offering, 100% Parent, and, and to really, like, look at how could we have a more positive, more powerful impact on the young people that, that we serve in whatever form that takes. So enjoy it. And uh, again, if you are missed any of these URLs, you can head on over to the show page at MelanieBensonStrict.com. We'll have the URL for you as well. You can just type in Gillette and uh, it'll pop up in the search bar for you. All right, Gillette, thank you so much. I appreciate you You're giving out time to share your journey and all these amazing impacts that you're having. You're so welcome, Melanie. It's been so great being with you here. And yes, much love to you. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. We'll see you again next week.